Sixers tomorrow night. ESPN has it on the TV. We've got it on the radio. Tom McGinnis on the call. 8 o'clock, game six against the Raptors. P.J. Carlissimo, uh, I believe he was on the radio call on Sunday for game four where the Sixers squandered that game. And then last night, they got the doors blown off them. So what's the carryover, if any? You know, the Sixers got blown out in game one, then they won two in a row. Is this a good omen? Let's bring P.J. Carlissimo in from ESPN, former NBA coach, Seton Hall. Of course, you remember that run. He joins us now here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Coach, welcome back. How you been? Excellent, Mike. How you doing? Doing all right. And I know uh, you were up there on Sunday where uh, the Sixers kind of let that one get away from them. And then last night, I don't know what happened, but um, – any carryover from the when you were coaching and you would lose by 35, did it matter if you lost by 35 or three? I mean, did that bug you or was it just like, or did sometimes you prefer to get blown out? Uh, how do you handle that well, as a coach? It's hard to say you prefer, but it's easy to deal with that, to be honest with you. I mean, you just, that's kind of one you put behind this series. I mean, other than Houston, uh, Golden State, and frankly, both of them have blown close to 20 point leads, but hung on. Like, you know, had 20, 18 20 point leads, and it came down to the other team shooting the last shot of the game. But, I mean, it's been bizarre all over the place. I mean, it started in the first round with uh, Brooklyn and Orlando, but I mean, the same thing has happened uh, all over the place in, in, in pretty much every series. Uh, you got teams blowing out the other team by 20 plus, and it doesn't seem to matter whether it's home or away. I mean, you know, Boston's winning in Milwaukee. Milwaukee's killing them in Boston. And name a series, and at Denver, Portland, it's been the same thing. So um, it's easier to walk away because you, you you can either talk about 400 things you did wrong or, you know, you, you put more into it when you have a game like Sunday afternoon in Philadelphia. Like, hey, had we done this right? Had we maybe done, you know, one or two of these things differently? It would, you know, a, a free throw here and there, a, a blown coverage. But um, th there isn't any carryover. There doesn't have to be carryover. The carryover to me, and it's easy to say, is Joel's he health. I mean, you know, let's be honest. Uh, I mean, if he's healthy, they, are, they, are, they didn't win despite him in game two, but he was basically a shell of himself in game two. Um, game three, he was, that was Joel at his best. Uh, and, you know, that that's what you want. I mean, if you look around, if you take KD or Steph away from Golden State for a night or James Harden off Houston or Giannis off Milwaukee, uh, or they play and get six points and, you know, three rebounds, they're not going to win. It's as simple as that. Um, I think Brett referred to him as the crown jewel the other day, and that's true. And Ben's struggling, too. I mean, to be honest, he, I actually think he's doing a better job defensively than people are giving him credit for. I mean, Kawhi was ridiculous until last night uh, in this entire series. But uh, the carryover that I would be concerned with, um, if I'm Brett or, or his staff and, or all the fans in, in your area, uh, is Joel's health. I mean, let's be realistic. If he's not healthy and he can't play, he doesn't have to play as well as he played in Game 3, but he's got to play like Joel Embiid. Yeah. Uh, if he does that, then they have a great chance to win and go back to Toronto. And, and then in, in a Game 7, anything can happen. They, they finally showed that they were capable of winning the game in Toronto. And, and Game 7s just do strange things to people. Obviously, we talk about it now with what's happened in Philly. But like normally you say going into a Game 7, hey, somebody sprains an ankle, somebody gets in foul trouble, or somebody's sick. Well, you see what happens when somebody's sick. That's happened, uh, in my opinion, two games for sure, and you can make a case for the third game with, with Philadelphia. So um, I just think they, it, that was an easy one to forget. Uh, they got to you know, look at the positives when they've played well in the series and when they've bounced back. And, and again, they take care of business at Wells Fargo, um, then it gets real interesting. Game sevens are just, you have no idea what to expect. And usually there's no carryover from whatever happened the other games in the series. It's somebody steps up, um, you know, usually the best player or somebody has a, you know, a tremendous game and that's the difference. Yeah, all the tricks are out of the bag by that time. The adjustments are no, all made. Exactly. It's uh, who hits the big shot, who's got the best player. And in the end, we had this discussion on the show the other day, and I think I had heard you on the radio say you thought Toronto was the better team coming into this year. And I agree with you. I thought Toronto was the better team. Heck, they won 58 games. And then the Sixers exactly. made some I trades. Because of what they did in a regular season and because they've been together more and, frankly, because they have Kawhi, 
who has, you know, people talk about playoff experience is one thing. Playoff experience, when you go and win finals and you're the MVP in the finals, or in Danny Green's case, when he made about 100 threes in a row against Miami, that won finals uh, a few years back, or Mark Gasol is the defensive player of the year. When you add three guys like that to a team that's already, what, they've won five of the last six Atlantic Division titles, and, and they have a you know bet, better record all year, and they beat the Sixers like 100 times in a row in, in Toronto going into this playoff series, they're the better team. There's no question about that. But the Sixers are good enough to beat them. Yeah, and I think uh, a lot of people look at the Sixers after the trade. They had this great starting five, but, you know, we you you just said it comes down to Embiid and him not being the guy that we saw for most of the season. How do you handle that if you're the coach? If your guy says, Coach, I'm sick and I don't know if I can play, and then he plays, and then the second night he says, eh, I'm still not – I mean, how do you balance that if you're the coach? I mean, do you say, hey, he's my best guy, i got to go with him no matter what? Or do you say, look, we almost need to sit him for the betterment of – if we lose this game in Toronto, so be it. But I need you at 100% for game six. How would how do you handle that as a coach? I think if it gets to game seven, believe it or not, you, you have to have the conversation. I mean, if, if, if this thing continues. I, I thought, and uh, if you think back to, and I'm honest to God, I'm so confused from doing too many series and too many games, <laughs> but I think it was game two when Joel struggled in Toronto and really had kind of a tough game. But made, I thought, the biggest play of the game. Remember that back-to-the-basket yep. move? He caught it in the paint. That was game two in, in Toronto. Yep, Beautiful drop-step move. It was the biggest play of the game. And I was waiting for that Sunday afternoon. And people kind of forget now. It's funny, like you go a game or two on and you forget about it. And you say, well, what happened, guys? It was a one-point game when Kawhi made that ridiculous shot. I mean, I, I say ridiculous only in terms of how difficult it was. It was 91-90. There's a minute and one to go, and he comes off the pick and, and actually has to step back to shoot it over Joel and knocks down a three. Now, there, there were still chances after that, but that was the shot of the game. Joel's move against Marc Gasol was the, was the shot of the game in game two. I was still waiting for that late in the game. Uh, on Sunday, and he got the ball underneath the basket at one point. Now, he was a little bit behind the board, but he kicks it to Tobias in the left corner in front of us um, for a three. And I'm just saying uh, they can't win. I, don't, I honestly don't think they can they win a game without Joel. Yeah, they can win a game here or there without him. They, they can't win this series without Joel, and they certainly can't win it when neither he nor Ben are putting up the kind of numbers they put up. All, I mean, all-star numbers. They're all-stars. Um, all-stars got to play like all-stars if you're going to win, particularly when you're playing a team that's better than you. I mean, it's proven over 82 games in the last couple of years and just looking objectively at the roster and the depth they have and the playoff experience they have. Um, that has to happen. I, I think this one, they can't afford it now, unfortunately. Um, you know, I, I, Joel's got to somehow, you know, get that bug out of him. And, and who, nobody wants it more than him. I feel so bad for the young guy because he's basically had nothing but bad luck since he's come into the league. Yeah. When you look at how few games he's played and how many different things he's dealt with, uh, you know, it's impossible. And for so many of these guys to finally be, you know, and even last year when they won, and, I, and I, you know, I liked, you know, you, you were hoping, but it, it wasn't realistic. This team you can look at and – if you put aside the fact they haven't been together and all the things they've had to overcome, they, they can win. They know they can win. And for them to be this close and for him to not be able to contribute to the level that they need him to, it's got to be really hard for him. But uh, I think he has to play. P.J. Carlissimo uh, I mean, he, is yeah. with us. ESPN has the game tomorrow night, by the way. And, P.J., you mentioned all-stars, all-star numbers. So I'll ask you, is Ben an all-star or does he have all-star numbers? Because – these playoffs last year, this year, other than game two against Brooklyn. Now, you mentioned he has played good defense, and he should get some credit for that. But if you're the coach offensively, uh, what are you drawing up with him on the floor right now? Well, I mean, obviously, he's way better in the open floor. He's way better if you can get him the ball, whether it's in transition or just when he cuts through the basket and you give him the ball. And he his best shot to me, his most effective shot is that little, I call it a hook. I don't know what he calls it, that little baby hook that he shoots with either hand, you know, when he's within 10 feet of the basket. That's the most effective thing. I said all year, and it's easy to second guess, yes, he's a legit all-star. He's proven that. There's no question about that. He deserves to be an all-star. But I, we said repeatedly, and it was, I think I had five Philly games during the year, I said, hey, 
when you can't make free throws and you're not an effective jump shooter, when you get to play a team seven times in a row and they get a couple days to prepare. This is like going back to college now, I mean, in terms of the preparation. Playoffs always reminded me so much of coaching in college because you have a couple days to get ready for each game. You can make adjustments. Travel's not a factor. It's getting to be a little factor now when you get into playing every other day. But still, it's Toronto to Philly. I mean, that's nothing. Um, It's different. And when you can game plan for a guy and everybody's on the same page and we know what we got to do, this, that, blah, blah, blah. It's it's difficult, and he's more effective when Philly the Phillies, Philadelphia's defense. I would say two and a half of these games has been excellent. When they do that and they're running off misses or they're running off occasional turnovers, Toronto's usually not a big turnover team. Then Ben's really good, but you get it into the half court or you get everybody back on defense and waiting, it's hard. Then you've got to make some perimeter jump shots. Or then when you get fouled, you've got to go to the free throw line and make that. So those are the elements of his game that he still has to improve on. And it's not an accident that it's more difficult for him in the playoffs than it is in the regular season. Now, I'll leave you with this. Uh, they play at home, and obviously they lost that game four, so it's not a gimme that you know, you're know you going to win this game at home. But I know whatever we saw last night, I don't know what you take from that. And let's assume that Embiid is a different version of himself. Can they win two games with what we've seen in this series? I know it's 3-2 and there's been a lot going on, but is it in the end, look, Toronto's just a better team, or do you think that the Sixers with a healthy Embiid can figure something out and and take down this Raptors team that has obviously – they're starting to play a much better last night. Green started to hit some jumpers. Lowry played a lot well, better guys showed up. Now, yes. Hopefully that's only going to be at home if you're a Philly fan. Fred Van Vliet was invisible. Um, Serge Ibaka was invisible till Sunday afternoon. You, you know, you had uh, – Norman Powell has still been not there. I mean, that their bench has been a big plus for them all year. They have struggled really uh, a lot in this series. Yes, I think – Can I? do I think Philly can win tomorrow night? If Joel's healthy, absolutely. Uh, is there a scenario where I can see them winning Game 7? Yes, but it would be an upset, and I think a big upset. Um, but, uh, but hey, you've you got to win, win the one, and, and you just say you don't wish injuries or anything on. It can be foul trouble. It can be injuries. It can be sickness. It can be just a guy having a bad night. I, I would, you know, if they're playing Toronto in Game 7 and Kawhi plays the way he plays in the first half last night, I, I like their chances. But um, you've you got to get there first. And Joel's got to be healthy. To well, me, it's it, that's yeah. as simple as it is. Forget the adjustments. Um, just get the medical report from Joel. Uh, th- that tells me how how realistic a chance they have. All right. Uh, it is Thursday night. ESPN Television has it. We have it on the radio. P.J. Carlissimo was kind enough to jump on board with us to kind of break this uh, mess of a game down last night. But, hey, tomorrow's another night. We'll see what Sixer team comes out. And more importantly, what Joel Embiid comes out. P.J., thanks. My great being with you. Thank you very much. PJ Carlissimo, like all guests appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. That was great.